so hopefully I can manage to not get bitten but at the same time show you guys this unique adaptation these snakes have look at that wow 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 look at that down you naughty little one Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about a poorly known species of snake, the Pulawe Kukri snake, Ogilodon prefrontali. The species is only found on a tiny island of Pulawe, just north of Sumatra. Very little is known about the behavior and habits of the species of Kukri snake, and I believe this is the first video ever made about them. Ogilodon is a genus of colubrid snake that is widespread throughout Central and Tropical Asia. There are currently 77 species recognized uh, in the genus Ogilodon according to the reptile database. The common name of the genus comes from Kukri, which is a distinctively shaped Nepalese knife uh, which is very similar in shape to the curved hind teeth of the Ogilodon species. These guys don't reach huge sizes and are usually between around 70 centimeters up to about a meter in length. Different species display wide, widely variable patterns and colorations from the beautiful red morph of the brown kukri snake to the banded and striped kukris. Oligodon, known as the kukri snakes, are specialized egg eaters. Most people when they think of egg eaters, they think of the African genus Dasipeltis, which specializes in feeding on birds eggs where they swallow the egg whole and then crush it with specialized enlarged vertebrae in their necks and then spit out the shell and swallow the contents. Those guys don't have any teeth though, quite opposite to these. These snakes feed in a very different manner. They have specialized enlarged set of rear fangs or teeth that they use to split open reptile eggs. Um, they use them to, sp hey! to split open reptile eggs. As they're swallowing them, it makes a little slit in the egg which helps them with digestion. Now, if they're not able to swallow the whole egg and the egg is a bit too big for the snake to swallow, the snake will then make a slit in the egg and then drink down the contents um, or actually feed on the embryo, depending how far along the egg has been developed. So very, very specialized using those rear fangs. It's a set of three rear fangs um, that they can actually slice through reptile eggs, which is incredible. Although they are known to feed primarily on reptile eggs, they're also known to feed on birds' eggs, as well as being documented on feeding on lizards, frogs, and small rodents. Kukri snakes are oviparous, laying between 6 to 12 eggs, uh, which they will find a nice place to, to put them in, in some leaf litter, and that'll take around 60 days for them to incubate. They're rear fang snakes, having a set of three enlarged teeth placed in the back of their, of their mouths, as well as a functional Duvinov gland, which is uh, the colubrid's equivalent of a venom gland, but it's not exactly. Although the snake is non-venomous, it is keen to bite and can inflict deep wounds due to its large recurved teeth and a really, really strong bite. The wounds tend to bleed a lot and take a long time to heal, suggesting the presence of an anticoagulant secretion within their saliva. So they're not venomous, but they do have something in their saliva that is an anticoagulant which bleeds a lot. Hopefully I'll get to show you guys these little teeth a bit later, but she's sitting nice and relaxed now, so I don't want to disturb her. It appears that it might be an evolutionary link on the way to becoming a venomous snake, since it's one of the only snakes that has fangs or an enlarged set of teeth, but no venom delivery system or duct to the teeth to actually deliver venom. Because I'm sure these guys feeding specifically on reptile eggs they don't really need any venom to overpower their prey. 
What makes these snakes so hard to handle is that their head is not distinct from their neck. It's almost just one width. Similar to stiletto snakes from Africa. This makes them extremely difficult to handle, almost impossible to grab behind the head without getting tagged. They have the ability to maneuver their head and their jaw in your grip and then they can use their teeth to stab and slash your fingers. So I'd love to be able to show you guys this unique adaptation of these three large recurved fangs at the back of their mouths. So hopefully I can manage to not get bitten but at the same time show you guys this unique adaptation these snakes have. Look at that. How oh, it's trying to trying to bite me by just spinning its mouth like that. Very, ow, 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 ow. Got me there, actually went through. So that's why these snakes are really difficult to hold because they can actually use those little fangs that they've got right here at the base of their mouths and they spin their heads back and because their heads are so non-distinctive from their necks they can quite easily maneuver in your grip and actually spin around and tag you. Luckily there's no venom, so it's more of a flesh wound than anything else which will bleed a lot. Uh, an anticoagulant within their saliva, so it tends not to heal very well and can be very painful. And with the larger kukri, this is still a smallish one, with a large kukri of about a meter in length, and it were to get you on your thumb or something and you were to maybe pull off or it were to pull away uh, these guys could actually give you some stitches so little ones not so bad to handle big ones I would use a hook stick or I would use a stick or something to keep this pointy end away very very cool adaptation to be able to feed on the reptile eggs and eggs that it does and I'm sure it aids in over overpowering any other prey items such as lizards and frogs as well with these dagger like little teeth very very cool little snake now you can also see it's got this little um, enlarged nasal scale on the front here which it uses to push through the leaf litter and potentially when it picks up the scent of a, of a reptile nest uh, these guys will push through a little bit of the topsoil to be able to get access to that nest and feed on whatever eggs that might find whether it's some lizard eggs or some snake eggs very very cool little species you can see it's got this beautiful creamy yellow underbelly as well as check it check it there look at that look at that making scratches on my nail wow so as i was saying <laughs> the defining feature is also they've got these wow 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 look at that it actually sliced me now you can see what a little one can do damn you naughty little one so as I was saying they've got this beautiful banding that you can see on their body here these little bands infrequent bands that go down the body this beautiful yellow underbelly these big 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 eyes and then that little that enlarged nasal scale which they use to oi, oi, which they use to dig through the undergrowth. See if I don't restrain her behind the head, she's a lot more calm, understandably so. She wants to defend herself. So very, very cool little snake. Kukri snakes have a defensive behavior that when they're threatened. They tend to roll over onto their sides and then lift up their little tails here and roll it in like a little shape that it's doing now, which will hopefully distract the predator and the predator will go to bite the tail as opposed to the head, at which point that leaves the snake open to try and intimidate its predator. When I found this snake, it was actually cruising just off the side of the road. I tried to make a break for it, but because of its small size, it's not very fast. Uh, it ended up stopping and then it went into the common S-shaped position and kept striking repeatedly. So really aggro little snakes. I've read that kukri snakes are primarily nocturnal, but I've also read many reports of people finding them during the day. So I believe which is the same, which is when I found this guy was middle of the day. 
So I think that these guys are more dependent on temperature and rains and things like that as opposed to actually being exclusively nocturnal or diurnal. These guys live on uh, mature forest floors in coastal areas like here on the island where there's a lot of leaf litter and they'll cruise through the undergrowth uh, looking for reptile nests and reptile eggs which is their favorite source of food. So a really really cool really unique little species of snake a real little privilege to be able to to see one considering that they're only found on this tiny little island so yeah really really cool to to have found the the Pulaway Kukri snakes. So guys if you like this video please do subscribe hit the notifications bell to learn about the next species I encounter I hope you learned something new I know I did First I thought this was a brown kukri and later doing some research found out it was a Pulaway kukri which makes it all the more special. So thanks for watching and remember to stand for what we stand on. Cool guys, so it's time to release this Pulaway kukri snake back into the wild. I found it literally on the road just behind me here, not even 100 meters away. So pretty much exactly where home is at. So yeah, back into the leaf litter she goes in search of her next egg meal.